Welcome to the KB Beauty Review Podcast. I'm still Andy Davis, and this is episode six of season five. This week, we're talking all about bathroom showrooms with a fantastic case study from TBK Design, a brilliant retailer in North London who recently moved to a brand new 30,000 square foot showroom that it planned, built, and designed with amazing results. In fact, TBK won the Bathroom Retailer of the Year 2021 in our very own KBB Review Retail and Design Awards. So, coming up, we have Chris Franklin from KBB Review talking to showroom manager Gary Parker on design, layout, customer journeys and displays, as well as the most important things, music and smells. Good smells, by the way, not horrible, nasty whiffs. Well, you see what I mean when you listen to it. It's an absolutely fascinating look at the thought process behind putting that showroom together, so don't miss it. But first... This week's episode is sponsored by PJH, one of the industry's leading distributors, supplying over 3,000 customers with a range of brands, including its own Bathrooms to Love and Prima Appliances, Sinks and Taps. It's been at the top of the game since it started in 1972, and for those of you quick with your maths... That means it's celebrating an amazing 50 years this year. To find out more, go to pjh.uk. And I'll put that link in the episode description. Now let's join Chris Franklin and Gary Parker, and I'll see you on the other side. Hi, I'm Chris Franklin, and my guest today is Gary Parker, a bathroom retailer, TBK Design in London, which won the KBB Review Bathroom Retailer of the Year Award last year. He's going to be giving us some insights into how they went about designing their new 30,000 square foot showroom. So, Gary, welcome. Could you start by giving us uh, a two minute posit history uh, and telling us all about TBK Design? Of course. We are a company that's been established now for over 35 years. Originally, we started off as a tile company, which, as you know, over the years, we automatically progressed into bathrooms as part of a package together with tiles. And over the course of the last 35 years, we've developed showrooms within the in and out of the London area due to our experience. Obviously, we are very sort of worldly traveled regarding to exhibitions uh, sort of all over the world and finding ideas that between me and the owner, Steve, that we like to sort of implement into what we class as the showroom. We were given probably, as we say, the opportunity about three and a half, four years ago of putting together a brand new showroom with obviously with 35 years of experience in tiles and bathrooms and with the knowledge of what we do for our clients, sort of high end, middle end and lower end, and what we do for our, the company ourselves, is that it gave us the opportunity to, to create a brand new showroom from, from scratch. Although you started out with tiles, you didn't abandon tiles, did you? And tiles are still a, a large part of the showroom, aren't they, in fact? It is. Tiles have increased, if anything, in the last 35 years. And as you know from seeing the showrooms, sort of they've just come bigger and bigger and better. But it's a very important side of the industry and business uh, that completes part of, obviously, as you see, the, the, the showroom that's got complete bathroom settings in the showroom. And obviously, it helps sell the complete pro the complete product. When I visited your showroom recently, uh, one of the first things I noticed was it looked good. It smelt good. There was smooth jazz playing in the background. What kind of led you to to create that experience? What I've noticed them for, again from travelling to luxury showrooms without within Europe and especially places in Italy and exhibitions, I just feel that if a client can walk into the showroom and the ambience of the showroom is of a soft music that you feel very relaxed, the smell of the showroom has a lovely amber and smell to the showroom, which makes you feel like you want to walk around because the smell encourages you, and that the music also going in the background, I think it just makes the client feel a lot more relaxed, a lot more that he feels at home, and obviously helps him spend money. 
<laughs> well, indeed, yes, so, and we certainly want that. But, but I, I felt that as soon as I walked in, that it, uh, it, it was a relaxing environment. There were cosy places to sit down and, and have a chat and uh, have a welcoming coffee before actually having a look around the showroom. But one, one thing that one of your colleagues mentioned to me was that the kind of music playing in the background is actually quite an important factor. It is. I think, to be honest with you, it's very easy to put in today's music, which is very young and very vibrant. And sadly, when you're sitting down and designing bathrooms and designing, and, and to be honest with you, when you're designing bathrooms for clients, it's personal. And when it's personal, I feel that that client needs to, as you said, feel relaxed, feel that the music that's in the background is in the background and not overtaking. And then obviously having a lovely coffee, which you've experienced from the coffee machine we've got here, that people feel relaxed and that they want to sit with you and they feel that they thank you for the experience, even though they're spending a lot of money with you, they thank you for the experience because of the way it's been presented to them. You don't want anything too up-tempo that, that has people suddenly rushing around the showroom and getting it all over in, and done within five minutes. Absolutely not. That's not what Tulls and Bath and TBK are about. TBK are about sitting down and taking their time and creating the perfect dream for the client of what they want. And by doing that, it takes time to build it. And for that reason, it has to be done slowly. It has to be in a very ambient atmosphere. It has to be very relaxed and they, they feel comfortable. Indeed. And you showed me also that uh, creating a nice fragrance in the showroom is not simply about putting a few bowls of potpourri around the place. It actually has to be done properly. And I think you had a uh, a proper industrial kind of fragrancing unit. We do, we do. It's funny. I, I sort of, again, going into local shopping centres where I've gone into, and in certain areas you sort of get that very ambient smell that sort of is that very encouraging sort of perfumey smell that you feel that you want to gain. It encourages you to want to walk in. We found a company which was an industrial machine, and then we had our own fragrance mix for the showroom specifically because we didn't like any of the ones that they had. And again, what that's done is that it's made people, when they come in, they comment about the smell, they love the smell, they ask where is it coming from. Again, it helps towards the sale and towards the help of making people relaxed in the showroom. So quite an important choice, but uh, obviously you, you went the right way, chose the right fragrance. If people comment on it, that's vindication of the choice. So much so that people ask us if they can tell us what the secret is and can they have a bottle of it. <laughs> <laughs> what also impressed me was um, the topic of discussion today is, is partly layout and design of a store. Everything was very logically laid out into different zones. So how did you come about that zoning concept? The, the idea was that when we sat down and we designed the showroom, we felt that we needed to cater for all of the needs in the marketplace. So what that did for us, it made us realise that we needed to split a showroom into three. So we had a sort of a lower end, sort of budget end of the market. We had a middle, end, middle range of the market, which is sort of, for the everyday person walking in. And then we had the bespoke upper end of the market, which is catering for these a much smaller minority, but well, wealthier people sort of within the marketplace. And the idea was, was that people could walk through the showroom and see the different levels of what they want in their bathroom, give them the opportunity to choose which level they want to work from. And what that's done for us is that people will flick from one level to another and buy from each to be able to make sure that they get what they want, but they also get it within the budget that they require to buy it for. That has helped tremendously in that way. When people come in at the ground floor, then, then you have your sort of lower priced bathrooms and your main tile displays, as I recall. Correct. And then as you climb the stairs, you then have that wonderful kind of entrance way with all the TBK branding and, and a, a view all the way along the showroom and the many displays. And that's the main bathroom display. And, and only as you go around the corner do you get to the inner sanctum, which I suppose is the bespoke area, isn't it? It is correct. That's right. Yes. Also, you decided to go for larger displays 
rather than having lots and lots of tiny cameo displays, which is so common in a lot of bathroom showrooms. I think what, what happened was, was when we came from the last showroom that we did, and we found that, again, going to very high-end luxury showrooms across Europe and places like that, and especially at in exhibitions as well, we found that people or suppliers were where in the old days we would do a bathroom setting and we would be put in toilets, we would be put in basins, we would be put in baths, and we were trying to cram everything into a display. We then mm. realised that, you know, we can position all the toilets in one place for them to be able to choose them from. We can position baths in certain places that they can choose them from. And what it meant was, was piece, pieces of bespoke furniture, hand basins and things like that, meant that we can do much larger basins, which obviously make it much more impressive, which we can sell off of. The furniture displays are certainly impressive, aren't they? And, uh, and as you say, it allows you to have larger displays of, of fitted and modular furniture and really show what can be done. Exactly. I think the idea of TBK is to push the boundaries out from the normal showroom from a point of view that people are going to walk into something and they can completely visualise what their bathroom is going to look like because the setting is big enough for them to realise exactly what they're going to see rather than in many places where they're looking at very small displays with pieces of items that are just put together but not fully displayed, where in here we have so many settings that are, that are large settings is that what people benefit from this showroom is that they can visualise completely from a display exactly what their bathroom is going to look like. Indeed, and uh, the, the other thing you mentioned was that, uh, uh, again, when people come into that first floor display, uh, you've given them a view down to the entire length of the showroom rather than cordoning everything off. Exactly. I think I've, I've always had a great belief, and that even goes back to stemming from sort of doing homes for ourselves as well as clients, is that when you open up a front door of a house, the, that you can see the entirety of the house, so you can see through the house, as we say, is like the million pound shot. So for us, it's so important that when the people came up from the stairs or out from the lift onto the first floor and look down, as you just mentioned, is that they can see right the way through to the very end of the showroom. So their eye line is not blocked by displays or things like that, that they can see right the way through to the back of the showroom to show you the size of the showroom and to show them that it's encouraging that they want to go and search and find things and look at things. Indeed, that's uh, an important factor, isn't it? And uh, anything that encourages people to linger and to spend more time has got to be a good thing, isn't it? A hundred percent, because the more time they spend in the showroom, the more chance they have of finding what they want. And hopefully, that obviously it creates sales for, for us as well. The other thing I wanted to touch on was the fact that you used a design agency to help you in, in creating the new showroom. How did that all work and, and what ideas did they kind of bring to you that uh, you found helpful? I think, to be honest with you, as regards to the actual showroom itself, between me and Steve, we, sort of, we knew the idea of what we wanted from the showroom and what we was doing. What we wanted to do, which is, which is probably what you've just mentioned in your last comment, is we wanted to make sure that the showroom would flow. Now, obviously, doing bathrooms for clients and things like that, they become boxes. And obviously they're set in boxes. A showroom is not a box. A showroom is an, is an open display, which as you said, you want to be able to walk through it and flow from one area to another and don't feel like that you're walking into a box. So what we did was we brought out an outside design company to help us make sure that we didn't put it into boxes and that we done it in a way that we would, that the showroom would flow right the way from the beginning when you walk in, right the way through to the end till you walk out so that you feel that you've walked the whole length of the showroom but done it in a way or in, in a way that you feel relaxed and comfortable and that you don't feel that you're being cornered into a box. And did you find it uh, uh, easy to work with them? Did, did they bring up any ideas that, that perhaps, uh, despite all your extensive experience, were helpful in, in creating the final goal? I think, to be honest with you, if you employ somebody to come in and help you do something, I think you have to respect them and listen to what they're bringing to the table because otherwise, if you don't, then there's no really need for you to bring them in because if you're not going to listen to what they have to say to you and look at it from a different pair of eyes, 
then I think it's very difficult to sort of sit around and say that why are those people there? So from our point of view, we brought in a design team. Why? Because we wanted to see it from a completely different angle. We wanted someone to, to talk to us about if it was them walking through the showroom and give us what we cast as the benefits and, and the, the bits that we were failing on to make sure that by the time we had the showroom finish, that between us, that we succeeded in getting everything that we wanted, respecting and listening to everything they wanted, and between the two of us, creating a showroom which as, as could be as good as perfect. Well, were there any surprises in any of the suggestions that they brought to the table? Of course. Sadly, sadly when you've been in this industry for 35 years, Chris, both me, me and the owner, you're quite stubborn in your ways as to what, the way you think things should be or you insist on that they should be done your way. So when somebody explains to you that, they, that you're wrong or that, you're, that you feel that it's not the correct way to do it, you do feel like, well, hang on a minute, I've been doing this long enough. If I don't know now, I would never know. But to be honest with you, it's the same in life. You're always learning things new every single day of the week. So for us, it was a great, great benefit for us to have that back, back up and that support. Also, I think what was good about it was that if you came up with an idea, you could actually bounce it off of somebody and they could give you your opinion professional opinion on what you were doing and felt and, and would let you know if what you're doing is correct. So from that point of view, it's so important because we spent probably in the region of about five to five and a half months design in the showroom and we spent nearly nine and a half months installing the showroom. So obviously from a point of view, it was literally nearly nearly a year and a half's project to actually get it to fruition from the from the very beginning. So it's important to be able to have that support and that backup from other people because there were so many decisions to be made that it was it that it does help tremendously. Uh, indeed, I can see that a, a fresh pair of eyes is valuable, isn't it? There's no doubt about that. Um, and uh, I've got to say, having as I say, been to the showroom, had a walk around. Um, clearly, you intended to put the wow factor into the displays. Um, you didn't go with the ordinary. Um, you decided to, to make sure that you showcased what was possible in bathroom design. As, as, as I say to every client that sits in front of me, and I say it very clearly, you come into TBK for an experience. What we do, I don't think is normal to in the normal bathroom industry. What we do is we tailor make bathrooms to sue clients' needs. We listen to clients. We listen to what they have to say. We are, we listen to their requests. We try every way possible to make them fulfill the dream for that customer in every way possible that we can by sitting and listening. And things like this showroom, as you know, and you've and I've explained to you being here, is that and, and same as your reaction when you walked up the stairs, is that you get that sort of wow factor every time from people coming in because it's something that they don't expect. And for me, I try to do that for clients individually, that I try to push clients sometimes out of their boundaries, out of their comfort zones. Why? Because I can see what the bathroom's gonna look like finished because I have the ability to be able to do that where they don't. So from the point of view is that I sometimes have to take them slightly out of their comfort zones to create something that they say to me afterwards, oh my God, wow it is beautiful and it takes sometimes it takes time and effort and patience to sit down and create that with people and the fact is that there are so many products on offer in the market today so many products that people will be unaware of despite the fact they use social media a lot and they're more informed than they were but uh, you can put options before them and, and show them in a room setting that they never otherwise have considered correct i think to be honest with you with with social media today with the website, with what can be done and created and people can put together. I think it's something now that people are a lot more knowledgeable within the bathroom industry. People, bathrooms bathrooms have become a much more fashionable industry. They, they used to be a necessity in the house. Now they've become a fashion piece of the house. So people now take notice of bathrooms. They like them to look nice. They like them to correspond with matching bedrooms and things like that sort of thing. So, so for us, 
the, the industry becoming fashionable has actually been a benefit to us because what it's done is it's made people realise that bathrooms are important. Indeed. And uh, the, the one thing that really struck me was the use of tiles throughout the entire showroom, and they are used to very good effect. That was obviously a conscious decision, not only to sell more tiles that way, but uh, to show the, the staggering variety on offer in the market. It is. I think for us, again, what we've done in this showroom, we have created a showroom that is our home, because what we've done is, is we've created a showroom that is as good as if it was done as our personal home because for us it's so important that the client sees the product at the best of its ability that you can get and if it means which was what we've done in this showroom it's taking a bit more time and spending more money to create the most perfect display that you can ever achieve for that particular tile in that setting that was important that we did that so that the client has the ability and also has the, has the experience of us to be able to show the people what they can create. The impressive thing was the the large slabs. Uh, Correct. Which are, you, you told me at the time, become increasingly popular. The fact that you're able to display them and actually have them on the walls in the bathroom sets must create quite an impact. It does, especially when you come up into the bespoke area, as you know, we have a stand here, which has probably got some in the region of 40 to 50 large format tiles in it. The tiles span from three meters high to 1.5 meters wide. Just the due respect of the size of the tile is a well factor on its own because it's so enormous. And what people have found is that we started bringing these tolls in around five or six years ago. And at first, people didn't understand them. They didn't work out why they were so big. And over the time of the last five years, people now have found that they like the idea of a tile going on the wall as a full piece because it, it imitates what I class as, as a marble slab. And that's what you class or what you would be buying in a luxury bathroom. And what it does is it creates that luxury feel with no maintenance, but the look is absolutely outstanding. And given the opportunity to be able to display so many so many of those tiles in one area, specifically in the showroom, is such a benefit to us, I can't say. And presumably sales have uh, increased as a result. 100%, yeah. Over the, as I said, over the last four or five years, so sort of we we wouldn't sell that many now. I can honestly say that every sort of luxury master bathroom and cloakroom that we do in many of the houses that we do, all of them have large slabs in their master bathrooms. They have large slabs in their cloakrooms, and they have large slabs on their ground floor tiling. So it's something that's just becoming more and more popular because people don't want to see grout lines. And the, the idea of the large format tile is that you have a lot less grout lines, if any. And because of that, sort of people love the idea of that and it makes the bathroom and the area look so much bigger as well, which is what it's what is what it out to achieve. Indeed, I would be very glad to lose all of the grout lines in my bathroom, I have to say. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Dragging it down to a more banal level, but it's important. Uh, I also noticed that your displays are not cluttered with brochures and sample boards. Never, never. For us, the showroom is, is, is our selling tool. Our showroom has got to be aesthetically the most pleasing and looking that you can find. The showroom is, for me, is my home. It's probably the most important thing in here. And that showroom has to be looking smelling, tasting, perfect every day of the week. I, I suppose with a large showroom, uh, you have a lot of flexibility. You can do so much more. For those who are listening who have smaller showrooms, uh, what elements that you've learned from the project of creating your large showroom do you feel that, that they could be looking at to good effect? I think the most important thing in a showroom is that you take each individual display, be it large or be it small, and you treat it as if it was your own. Because at the end of the day, your what you do for people is personal. If you can create something, be it a very small shower room to a very luxury bathroom, but you make sure that you do everything possible for that 
for that display, which in a thirdly that the client can see, then from there, I think you've done the best that you can offer people from the point of view that they gain, that they're buying your knowledge and expertise because that's what you specialize in. So for me, it's important for small showrooms that if you've got a small showroom out there and you can create three or four displays, make sure those three or four displays are perfect. Make sure that everything in that display combines with each other. Make sure everything is not cluttered. Make sure that everything talks to each other. And you know what? You'll be surprised what people will comment about it because that time and effort that's put into it, you do, re you do reap the rewards from it. That's sound advice, Gary. And uh, I think that brings us to the end of our time. So uh, it just remains to say thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure talking to you too. That was KBB Reviews' Chris Franklin talking to Gary Parker from TBK Designs in London. And, you know, my favourite bit of that actually was Gary talking about the need to be open-minded to new perspectives on your business, no matter how much experience you have. And the results are there to see. So I do highly recommend having a look at their showroom if you're in their area. I'll put a link to their site in the episode description. Thanks again to PJH for sponsoring this week's episode. Just like me, they're celebrating their 50th birthday this year. So congratulations to them. To find out more, go to pjh.uk. See you next time.